We all want to get more sales on Redbubble and the number one way to get more sales on Redbubble is to use tags properly. Well, there's a lot of things you should know about tags, probably more than you actually realize. I've learned so much more about tags than I ever knew before just by digging for information for this video and I can't wait to implement it all and I can't wait to actually show you everything I've found. But first, if you use tags, then you're just like me. So hit the like button on this video. Let's try and get to 300 likes in the first day. That sounds ridiculous, but I feel like we can do it. I feel like, you know, with your help, we could definitely get to that goal. There are eight things you should know about tags on Redbubble. Number one, don't just use as many tags as you possibly can. 10 is quite a good number to go by. And if you're thinking, well, why not add 50? Because we can add 50. And surely the more tags means I'm going to be showing up for more search terms on Redbubble. That's much better, no? No, that's not, that's not better. No, 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 no. That is not the case here. In fact, to Redbubble, that would be considered tag spamming. And that's not good for anyone. If you are unsure on how to tag your t-shirts, you can show your design to a friend and ask them the first three things that comes to mind when they see your design or the first three sentences that they can think of that comes to mind when they see your design. And you can use that information to actually create the tags. Number two, let's just quickly discuss tag spamming a bit more so that you don't do it under any circumstances. So many people do this and a lot of people's reasons are, well, everyone else is doing it, so why can't I do it? Well, firstly, no, that's really annoying, that's really selfish, and tag spamming is annoying for so many people. One, it's annoying for the algorithm because it completely messes it up in terms of knowing what to search for, what, what Redbubble should display for certain keywords. Sometimes, you know, if you have a unicorn t-shirt, they shouldn't display a cat t-shirt. So don't use cat just because the cat keyword is trending. You see what I mean? Sometimes it's very annoying for the algorithm. And in actual fact, Redbubble have said in one of their blogs that if you do this, it will actually end up, they'll actually end up putting you way, way, way down and you'll just fall into the ether of the internet and never be found. So that's not anything we want, is it? So to recap number two, don't fill up your tags with celebrities that are trending, with things that are trending, with Christmas because it's trending. Just use relevant tags. If you have a Christmas t-shirt, then brilliant, use Christmas. But if you have not, if you don't even, if it's not a Christmas t-shirt, it's got nothing to do with Christmas, don't just use the word Christmas because it's trending. It's annoying and it's not gonna be good for you. Number three, don't double up on words. The Redbubble algorithm is actually quite smart. For example, if you have a Christmas cat t-shirt, you don't need to use the tags Christmas, Christmas cat, cat. You could just use the tag Christmas cat and Redbubble will know to rank you for the words Christmas, for the words Christmas cat, for the words cat. You don't need to use those tags all separately. So that's really smart. Number four, I bet you didn't know this one. You don't have to use the product type in your tags. A lot of people will use the word t-shirt in their tag or sticker in their tag, like cat sticker or cat t-shirt, whatever it is. You don't need to use the product type in your tag because that's automatically tagged by Redbubble. So if you're selling a t-shirt or you're selling you know, a sticker, the word sticker and the word t-shirt will already, already be tagged and associated with your product. So if someone searches for sticker, you have the potential to actually come up. Or if someone searches cat sticker, because you have the word cat, you have the potential to come up. Number five, a great tag to use is your name. And you might be thinking, well, why would I use my name? My name doesn't mean anything. A lot of people actually search for your name. And I've done this a whole bunch of times. I've searched for specific people's names. And I've realized when you search for people's names in Redbubble, and they've come out and said this themselves as well, you can't find people, you can't find profiles by searching for their name. And, and if you can, it's very hard. It's not very easy. So if you use your name, for example, if I use Shimmy Morris in one of my tags, that means if anyone searches Shimmy Morris, I will show up. Now, this is really good for you if you have a social media following or you, you, you have a presence somewhere where people are actively searching for your name. If no one ever is searching for your name, then yeah, maybe you don't want to waste one of your tags. But on the off chance that someone is searching for your name or they tell a friend, I just bought, you know, Shimmy Morris a t-shirt on Redbubble, they can just quickly search for Shimmy Morris on Redbubble and find my t-shirt, right? Rather than just find a search for the t-shirt and see everyone else's t-shirt. So that's why using your name could actually be quite good. And a lot of people probably don't even consider using their name. Number six, the best way to find tags is to actually just use Redbubble. 
So you can see on the search thing, if I search bar, if I search cat, you've got auto things that will come up. So you've got catty, catch, phrase, cat lover Christmas. So these are all popular tags because they are showing up. And also you can see here, they are trending. So that's really, that's just a brilliant way to find keywords. But as well as that, you can click search. And what will happen is you've got all of these um, similar keywords that you can potentially use. So if you're, if you can't think of, you know, ideas to use, you can search for whatever the main keyword is. And now I've got kitten, kitty, animals, pet, feline, dog. Okay. Dog's not really relevant. Pets, cartoon, meow. Um, you've got so many, you've got black cat. Now bear in mind, only use the ones that are relevant. Now, as well as that, what you can do is to see if a keyword is getting good traffic or has potential for you, you can see the results here. So for the keyword cat, there's 662,000 results. That's gonna be really hard for you to rank for because if you create a design, you're competing against over 600,000 other people. So if we go for kitty, how many does that get? That gets 162,000. That's already so much better. If we go for kitties, right? That gets 162,000 as well. If we go for meowing, that gets 962 results. Look at that. That is gonna be so much easier for you to rank for just because it gets so much, it has so many less results in the, in the search, which means there's a lot less competition you're going up against, right? If you're going up against 160,000 people or 900,000 people, it's gonna be a lot harder for anyone to see you. But if you're going up against 900 people, it's gonna be so much easier for people to come across your designs. Number seven, if you truly run out of ideas for tags, and this is a long shot, but if you completely and utterly run out of ideas for tags, what you can do is you can use your main tag, so if it's cat again, and then you can just search Google for synonyms of cat. You can see what comes up and Believe it or not, you will find other tags that way, but you shouldn't need to do that because there are so many levels before that to actually find tags. Number eight, you could use the best selling t-shirts or the best selling products. For example, if you go for best selling, you click on a product, right? Whatever it is, and you can actually see what tags they are using down at the bottom. Now, a lot of the time you'll see that using irrelevant tags. And like I said, just because they're using irrelevant tags doesn't mean you have to copy them, but you can get more tag ideas by doing it this way. Just make sure that the ideas you are going to use from them are still relevant to your own t-shirt or design or whatever you're selling. And there we have it. If you found any of those ideas useful, please hit that like button. It would be so cool if we could get to 300 likes in the first day. I don't know if I've done that before, actually. That would be really, really cool. It would be a great achievement and I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you have any other ideas of, you know, for finding tags or using tags, let me know down in the comments down below. And let me know down in the comments down below. That wasn't good English. And, okay, and. If any of the ideas are new to you, these ones that I've mentioned here that you haven't yet done, that you didn't know about, let me know in the comments down below because that's amazing. I love being able to help you and I love the fact that you can go and implement these ideas and hopefully get more sales this way. So, brilliant. And finally, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I've actually planned so much amazing print on demand content for you and I cannot wait to share it with you. I'm really, really excited and I just, I can't wait to see you in future videos. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in those other videos.